Champions League is exactly where Manchester City want to be this time next year. Tonight they are in Europa League action. News to come on that match shortly, but as ever, there's just as much interest in what's been going on off the pitch at Eastlands. Brian Marwood is their chief football operations officer. He sorts out everything as far as transfers is concerned. As he's told us that recent jives about City's spending are laughable. Our reporter Brian Alexander has spent the day behind the scenes at the club. He's at Eastlands tonight and he joins us. Good evening, Brian. Hi, Ian. How are you doing? So, um, Brian Marwood, a key figure at the club and someone who is very key to Manchester City's development. Yes, he is indeed. It, it's been a very interesting day, this. You know, starting off at the training ground at Carrington, then going to uh, the Academy Centre at Platts Lane in the middle of Manchester, and now here at the City of Manchester Stadium in all its glory under the, 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 the floodlight seal. It's a very cold evening. But as you say, Brian Marwood, his influence pervades absolutely everywhere, in charge of everything to do with football, except for actually picking the first team. And uh, City, after spending £120 million more on six new players this summer, they've been condemned by the longest-serving managers in, in the Premier League. Alex Ferguson described their transfer policy as kamikaze signings, and Arsene Wenger has said it, it was like financial doping. Well, in a very rare interview, Bram Arwood gave a robust defence of City's transfer policy. Contrary to what you read and, and you see on TV, um, there actually has been a, a, a sort of strategic direction in terms of the players coming into this football club and, uh, and ones that are leaving. So, so it's not kamikaze signing as Sir Alex yeah, Ferguson thinks. I'll, I'll let you mention those words rather than... Rather than well, that uh, must have riled you, must have. Yeah, we, they, there's a lot of things, to be fair, Brian, that I think, unfortunately, people are, are misinformed. And I think that... Uh, they form opinions without knowing the true facts and, and all we can do is try and inform and educate people of exactly what is happening here it's a little bit now it's it's just become you know, it's just become laughable some of the comments that have been made about our football club but i think those people that are working inside the club actually know what's going on and we're comfortable in terms of what we set out to do we know the direction that we're heading and um, you know we're confident that we'll reach the goals that we've set ourselves. So all those all those players that you signed this summer, uh, Korov, Boateng, Silva, Torre, Balotelli, and Milner, they were all part of a, a grand plan. They were players that the manager said we need those to make the next step up. Yeah, very much so. I mean the, the the manager is consulted at every stage. Um, he very much wanted um, to take us to that next level and we knew we would have to make some investment. What we've kind of done is we've kind of fast-tracked that investment. You know, this is, on normal circumstances, you could well look at this as a, is, is over a period of, of five to ten years. We are extremely fortunate to have owners that are prepared to invest in not just the team, but the whole club. Everywhere you look, there's been investment made. The reason they have done that is to make this a sustainable football club. So it's not just for now, it's for the future. And the team needed investing. 18 months ago, we were fighting a relegation battle. Last year, we just missed out on getting into the top four. This year, you know, our ambition is to be in that top four, to be playing in the Champions League. So to do that, it needs investment. And um, But we believe they are going to be the next four or five years. And this club, I believe, will keep us at the very, very top of, uh, of hopefully European football. But just, just looking at the prices, you're having to pay kind of 24 million for Silva, 24 million for Torre, 24 for Balotelli, 26 for James Milner. Is there a problem now that because other clubs in the marketplace know that you've got some cash to spend, that you're kind of creating your own price, that you're having to pay more than you might have to? Well, it's a bizarre market because no one's kind of spending any money no. at the moment. So, uh, you know, what, what we have to do is, you know, if for instance, James Milner, you know, the price is what it is, and, you know, Villa weren't prepared to uh, sell him for less than that. If we want to bring James Milner to our football club, then we have to do that. I believe we're actually investing in the future of our club. I believe James Milner, at the age he's at, will only become even better. I think, you look at his performance on Monday night, he had one training session with the first team under his belt before that game on Monday. And that's the kind of level of quality. Not just, again, him as a player, but also him in the way he applies himself to becoming a professional footballer. He conducts himself in the best way you could possibly can do. And he's the type of players that we want at this club. Now, that comes at a price. Whether whether I like it, you like it, or whatever, you know, no one has, uh, has condemned Manchester United.
United or Chelsea, you know, clubs like that, when they've paid big money for players over the years because they brought quality in. We believe in those players that you've already talked about bring the necessary quality to take us to that next level. But so, so what you're basically saying is the, the money you've spent in the last 18 months doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be doing this every summer or every winter. I, I, I believe now we have a squad that is capable of being the squad for the next four or five years. We will make tweaks, um, whether it's in the January transfer window or, or the summer. We will make tweaks to our squad because you always have to have that situation where you know you're freshening things up in certain positions. We'll have players that will come to you know the, the, towards the end of their careers that maybe their contracts run out or maybe it's time for them to move. That, that's human nature. That happens with everybody, not just Manchester City. And so, because of the new 25 player rule, it also means that you have to have a, you know, a, a much tighter control over the, the pool of players you can call upon. But I guess because of the rule where as long as there's enough under 21s, that plays into your hands because you've still got the young kids to be able to sort of supplement the squad you have in emergencies. Well, I think football needs to think very carefully about this new rule because, you know, the 25-man squad, we used 33 players last season. Now, clearly there's a shortfall there if you've only got 25, which what you then have to do is you have to keep your best under 21s. Now, actually, your best under 21s, ideally, you'd probably like to go out and get some loan experience. So whether that's going into the Championship or whether that's going into another club at the Premier League, but clubs are going to be frightened of doing that because if they do get it themselves into a situation where they lose players through injuries and suspensions and you've got your best under 21s somewhere else, then that's going to create problems. So I'm, I'm not a big fan personally of how this is going to play out because I think that age bracket between 18 and 21, we need to be better in terms of how we develop those players. And if they're not allowed to get the necessary experience, then maybe we're prohibiting some of their development. Okay. Can we just nail down just to sort of the final questions on the squad? Any news on sort of Adebayo, he's staying? Yeah. Shea Gibbon, he's an important one. Last year's possibly best goalkeeper in the league. Can't get in the team now. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Is he going to fight for his place or what? Yeah, he's going to fight for his place. I mean, he's, he's part of the squad. Shea's a very, very professional sort of person. It's a bit strange for him um, in this current situation because he's been a number one goalkeeper for a long time. I have a lot of sympathy uh, with him. Um, the club do, but equally what the club's trying to do is to build a squad that is capable of challenging for every competition that we play in this year. Last year we got cruelly exposed because we had two goalkeepers that were out injured and we had to uh, we had to go and, and find a goalkeeper to play in our last three games when we're fighting for a Champions League place. So, you know, it can quickly change.